What's up guys, my name is Martin Ice and today I got five questions for you guys and I'm asking international student in Changsha Universal Science and Technology five questions that you guys maybe are interested to listen to. So I will turn around the camera, you guys will be able to see them, they will introduce themselves. So let's go to this video and make sure you subscribe, leave your like. Let's go. Yes guys, so we're here and my first question is Okay. Hi guys. Um Maloi Elijah. I'm from Kenya, a part called Narok. Uh, about the question, I think China is a very good place to study. But first of all, it depends on the major the person wants to study in China. Uh, because China is very good at engineering courses like civil engineering, computer science, the software engineering, all those engineering stuff. I think it's very good because it's a, a country that really measures itself on practicality. For example, we have if we talk about civil engineering, we see that the Chinese people are the most ones that are uh, doing the construction works in Africa and even in European countries. Some of them even go to America to do the construction stuff because they're so good at it. Really major on practicality because they have a lot of machinery and stuff. So I think it's a really good place to study. So I think I would advise people to study in China. What about you, please? Oh, hi guys. My name is Jared and I'm also from Kenya. From my point of view, I think studying in China really depends on your course. And mainly I recommend guys who want to study civil engineering, they can choose. China is a good place to come and study civil engineering. And mainly if you want to study civil engineering, it's better you study in Chinese language rather than in English. Mostly they know how to explain very well in Chinese language. So for my point of view, I think studying in China is very good and I advise you to come and study for those who want to do civil engineering. So hello guys to answer this question. Uh, first of all, again, I come from Kenya. So Kenya, uh, we mainly major on understanding concepts and I have come to understand that in China they mainly major on grasping the concept. For example, if I had a question, I would cram the whole concept. That's how they do it in China. Like they cram the question, they cram all the process to ensure that they don't forget anything. So back in our country, we, we, we mainly major on understanding, just understanding the concept, which is sometimes not very efficient, but it is good because a person will not forget about thing they have learned. Again, studying in China, they mainly major on practicality, but our country, maybe because we don't have a lot of uh, staff, machinery, uh, laboratories, so most of the time we do it theory because maybe of uh, lack of machinery and stuff, but we are, we are also fine. What about you? Yeah. Okay, as for me, I'm yeah. also from Kenya and I've been studying in Kenya uh, one year engineering course the same as in China. Mm -hmm. I think there is slight differences because in China the requirement for passing the exam is a bit higher than the, the requirement that is in Kenya. So you find a lot of students in China they really work hard, they study hard, but in Kenya they don't really like work hard or study hard when it comes to exams. They only study when they are revising for the exams and they work very hard when they are revising for the exams. Okay. But in China a lot of students they take their studies very serious and they study day and night really serious. That is the, also the main difference. And also I think about practicals. China is more practical when it comes to engineering and Kenya is not that practical as well. Mm -hmm. But it's also, also good to study. Hmm. So it depends on, it really needs a person to be very open because the Chinese they expect international students to be uh, active because themselves, most of them are a little bit shy. So if you are a person who is very active, you really have a lot of Chinese friends. The next thing is you need to maybe understand the language. If you could speak the language, it would be so good for you because they like to speak to foreigners who understand the language. Also, the Chinese people, their relationships, they are a little bit mutual. So if you have something to share with the Chinese people, it will be so easy to form friends with the Chinese. So if you have something to teach them, maybe English, it would be so good for you to be really easy to find a Chinese friend. Personally, because I could speak some Chinese, I have some friends. Mm, we work together with them. Sometimes we go out sometimes. So it's not so hard. They are very friendly. 
we'll watch you. Okay, I think uh, the main barrier when it comes to relating with Chinese is the language. If the, if you don't understand Chinese, it might be difficult for you to form Chinese friends. Because most of the Chinese, they are afraid to talk in English because they are afraid of making mistakes. But if you get to know the Chinese language and you talk with the Chinese students, they are very good people and they are also very compassionate. They can help you if you want anything from them. Okay. And if I see if you want to have a relationship with the Chinese, is just first learn Chinese language mm -hmm. and also know that most of them are very shy. They don't actually approach international students. They are very shy. But it doesn't yeah. mean that they are bad people. They are just good people, but they are shy. So if you want to relate to the Chinese, you better learn the Chinese language first and then approach the Chinese. And then that is the time they can really be good friends to you. This is not a, a question, like a formal question here, but I'm asking, is it easy to get girlfriend in China as friend? I think it's not so hard, mm -hmm. but it depends on the family, because the family will go against the relationship. Okay. Yeah. But it's not hard, it's, it's easy. Okay, for me, I think it's somewhat easy and also difficult at the same time. Because they have to consider about their cultural differences. And also most of them, they have to take the advice from their parents. So if their parents are against the relationship most of the time, it may not work. Mm -hmm. But they are open people, they can yeah, okay. interact with them. That's good. Uh, so, I'm um, making money. Personally, currently, I'm not making money, but there are a lot of uh, businesses to do in China. For example, shipping of stuff to the country. Maybe we have a business uh, in the country that deals with supply of stuff. Maybe you can uh, supply electronics because they have really cheap and efficient electronic stuff. There is also things like clothing and shoes and stuff. You can ship them to your country. And then uh, you can work as an assistant in school whereby you will not only f uh, get Chinese friends because they also work in the offices mm -hmm. but you will also get some money to keep up How do you make money? Mm, making money in China, I think it's a bit difficult because, It's a bit difficult But Why? Because most of they don't, they restrict students who, who came here to with a uh, study visa instead mm -hmm. of a working visa So if you have a study visa, it is difficult for you to get a job when you're still studying mm -hmm. but especially like jobs like teaching English for fit most of the international students they is that legal and legal it is not allowed it's not, it's not allowed if okay. they find you if the government find you teaching English you may be in trouble so I think it's not it's not very easy that's why you find a lot of international students they prefer doing online online business like yeah. selling clothes and doing all those online stuff instead of teaching because sometimes if they find you teaching English they you may end up in trouble because of the working of the visa. But if you have a working visa then it is easy for you to work. They are, you are allowed to work. There are people they want to come in China. They just don't know if it's easy or hard to get money. I think for, from, from what I know, I think there are some students mm -hmm. who still can teach in English but I don't know, they are some more exceptional. I'm not, I'm not sure about them yeah. but they still can teach. So in general is is not allowed. In general, it's not allowed. It's not actually not allowed. As but I don't, I'm not sure. Whether, yeah, if you are a student, yeah. I'm not sure whether it depends on the province you are in or the, or the university. But because I had a friend who was in Beijing, but he was teaching English and he was still a student. Wow, it's amazing. So, and if you, if you are an English teacher, even if you are a student, mm -hmm. they pay you a lot. You, you can earn a lot of money. So I, I'm not very sure whether it depends on the school or the. But mostly. What I, what I hear from the school is that you are not allowed to work when you have a student visa. This will bring us to our last question, that is... Oh, I'll begin with an example. I have, I have two friends, they were in this same school. They are from Tanzania. So they, they were studying computer science. They found a job in Shanghai. They are currently in Shanghai. They are working there. They were doing masters, a master's degree. So it's not very hard, especially if you have the, if you are a good student, if you are a sharp student, because I really go with sharp students. So it's not so hard, but you also need a work permit again. You have to have a work permit, you have to work for it, a working visa, and a work permit. So you have to, it's not, it's not hard. Yeah, it's possible. Okay, from my opinion, it is possible. After graduating, you can easily get a job, especially if you have a company that you are doing internship. 
Mm-hmm. They can easily hire you if you are a smart student. You are working there, and they, they saw that you have you have the capability to help them in any situation. They are easily going to absorb you after you finish your university. So after that, then they are going to work for you. They are the one who are going to give you the working visa. Yes. You don't have to worry about the working visa after the company absorb you because they are the one who are going to provide the working visa and all those. So you don't have to worry, provided you finish and you have a company that you are doing internship with and. Uh, maybe you are outstanding in the company. You, what you are doing, it was very well. You easily absorb, and then you can easily get a job. Hmm. So hello, guys. Um, first of all, before you come to China, you must make sure that you know the course you want to study because you cannot come to China and begin to talk about which course you like study. You will waste a lot of time because um, there would be nobody to. To go through when you need advice, you have to come with all your advices. You know what you want to do. Be serious about what you want. For example, if you came to study uh, civil engineering, you must you must like the course. Otherwise, you, you would waste a lot of time wondering why you first of all came to China. Because some of the time it will be boring because you are out of home mm-hmm. and stuff. But you have to really like what you're doing in China. Again, mm, you had you don't have to worry about time. You don't have to worry about maybe I'm wasting a lot of time. Maybe you had already studied in your country and you had finished maybe three years in the university. Then you left the course and now you came to China. You don't have to worry about it. As long as you like it, just flow with the time, and everything is going to be fine. As long as you like what you're doing. Okay, for those students who want to come to China, as what he said, like you have to know the course you are coming to study and. If you have, if you come, because I find like some international students, they come here and they are studying civil engineering. But before they came here, they were thinking that they are coming to do law, and now they come to do some kind of unit they didn't understand and they have never had in their country. So they find themselves failing, and their scholarship being cancelled. And it is very hard for them because they cancel a scholarship here. You have to pay for the fee, and the fee here is very expensive. Yes. Especially for those students, maybe they come from Africa, or most of them. Yes. The scholarship, the fee is very expensive, and it will be trouble for you looking for another university and transferring to another environment. So it's better for you before you come here. Make sure that the course you are coming to do is the right course, because they are coming to give you the new, the units for that course. Not like you are studying economics and then come and do civil engineering. Yes, yes. you'll get some difficulties. Or else, when you come here, maybe you had some basics of the units of that course. You have to study hard and. Really do hard, and that is the time you can pass because the requirements for the scholarships are very high. The marks are very high, so if you fail, they are going to cancel the scholarship event. And also, when you come here, make it a point to study Chinese language. I know it is difficult, but just make it a point to study. It is very good because it will break the barrier between you and the Chinese student to be able to communicate with them, form friends, and be able to enjoy life here in China. Because if you don't, if you don't have, if you don't really understand Chinese. It is difficult for you to communicate with them. Most yeah, of the course is difficult. Right. Although, right now, most of the Chinese students, the young students, they can speak in English, but they are mm-hmm. not really that confident to speak to in English. But at least they can understand. But I still, I still recommend you to study Chinese. Just a little bit. Just know a little bit. Maybe up to HSK four, HSK three. Just communicate, and then afterward, you can find a Chinese friend. Then you can improve your Chinese.